we're going to continue to use Cry For You as a bit of a springboard to talk about some other ideas. And this concept is uh, tension and release. And really, this, this idea is everything about music. It's, it's kind of everything about life as well when you think about it. Um, but everything, you know, melodically. If it's a chord tone, you kind of consider that home. But if it's not a chord tone, it's a tension tone. And it need, it, it's going to want, it's going to sound like it wants to go somewhere. And Cry For You is kind of the perfect example for this melodically because the melody is built on a tension tone. Um, set up over the a D minor chord. It's now, if we study what that note actually is to the key and to the chord of D minor, it's the note E. So it's not a chord tone. It's the second scale degree. You might call it the ninth because there, there is kind of the seventh is in the chord. So technically, but it's the second scale degree. It's it's the it's the E note. And as we talked about before, there's that there's that third of the chord, and that's again to me that's the note that really um, gives you the flavor of the chord. It, it, it gives you the emotion of that chord. Okay, so. So there's that tension. It wants to go somewhere. It could go, it could resolve back down to the tonic note, the D. But that's where I get, that's where I release it, right there on that, on that F natural, which is that third of the, of the D minor. Now the next chord is B flat major. And guess what? That D is the third of the B flat, right? So that's already kind of home. So. So again, the reason I'm pointing this out is that the the melody is is going somewhere. It's just not just a static, you know. Though there's a, there's a there's a time and place for that as well. But music to me that's emotional, it has it has direction, it has tension and release. And th this goes back to, of course, all the great classical composers that are, were the masters of this, from Bach to Beethoven. Um, so there's recommended listening there. But this is a much simpler form of it. But that's the basic idea. If it's not a chord tone, um, it's going to be a tension tone, and it's going to want to go somewhere. So let's let's check out a couple other tension tones. So there's that's that's the ninth. So it either wants to go up to a chord tone or down to a chord tone. That's as simple as that. So we just went up to that minor third. But I could have gone. That, there's that release. Now, what if it had been the note G? Another good tension note. It's not, it's, it's the fourth scale degree. So you've got root, second, third, fourth. If I were to land on that, I want to hear it go to that A, the fifth. Or back down to the third, that F, natural. Sorry. thinking about going to that B flat major you can think about that chord shape I'm on a chord tone that's the fifth okay we're going to use the uh, the backing track for cry for you to demonstrate this idea of tension and release and again the chords are just D minor to B flat major essentially though there there really is a seventh in the chord and maybe a major seventh I might allude to but this is going to be uh, 
illustrating the tension and release. So at the beginning of each bar, I'll, I'll start with a tension note, meaning a non-chord non -chord tone. But within that bar, I'll, I'll resolve it to more of a static chord tone, okay? So here's the track. Let's try it. So within that example, I was just improvising, So, but it, it brought to light a couple more things in this regard that I can talk about, where I started with the melody. So that hopefully will give you an idea what that tension and release sounds like. But then I started really developing that same concept over the whole neck. And uh, so over that D chord, there's that G note, it's a non chord tone. And I went from, then I bent from the, the A to the C. And there's the release. And then when it goes to the B flat chord, I bent up to an E, which was the tension note on the D, but it's also a tension note on the B flat. Because it's, it's, a, it's a sharp 11 for those keeping track. that E natural on the B flat. So, which when released is a really nice resolution into the third, that B of, uh, that the, the D natural of the B flat, sorry. Or I could have been up to the F, because that F is in the chord. And if you're thinking about pentatonically, there it is right there, releasing to that tonic of the, of the key, but again. This happens to be the third, which is a really nice note on that B flat. But that note F there is a nice, nice chord tone. Not to say you need tension and release in every bar. Um, sometimes I'll start with a nice strong note if I if I've had enough tension just prior to that particular segment. I'll decide that I just want to hear that. Over that B flat chord, those are really strong notes. Sorry. So still just a straight D minor pentatonic over that B flat major is really one of the most pleasing collections of notes because it's got the, the fifth, the third, the ninth, and the major seventh. That's my favorite note on the whole chord in addition to the third. I'm hoping that gives you a little insight into that, the technique of tension and release. Again, everything in music is really based on that. Um, so getting your ears tuned into that and uh, adding that to your repertoire um, can really help you uh, make some great music. That's my hope anyway for you. <laughs>